the nation's ultimate stock car series, is at one of the country's hottest speedways. This is Sunset Speedway, and we're getting set for 300 laps of lightning-fast racing. Last time out, Alex Tagliani broke records and schooled the field as he took the win at NASCAR's first trip to this third of a mile speed plan. Now the series has hauled its way back to the gateway to cottage country for what promises to be a bump and grind affair as the NASCAR Pinty Series gets back to its short track roots. As the summer racing season heats up, so does NASCAR racing on TSN. This is race number two of the 2016 NASCAR Pinty Series for Innisfil, Ontario for the Leland Industries 300 presented by Dickies. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a beautiful evening here at Sunset Speedway. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey will both be patrolling the pits for us here this evening. But, Adam, we move from a really tough road course, the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, where Andrew Ranger took the win. He now controls the points lead to a tight bull ring here at Sunset. Dave, that's the beauty of this racing series. We go from a complicated road course to a technical street circuit and then right back to a high bank oval. It's all back to back. These teams and these drivers are the most diverse in the country. That's what makes this the best racing series in Canada. And one driver making his first start here today will be the 0-2 of Mark Dilley in the Leland Industries Ford. Mark Dilley had an outrageously horrible season last year, but he's the track promoter here at Sunset and he wants to do well in front of his home crowd. And this race in particular last year was terrible for Mark Dilley. He wants to do better. The team built him a brand new race car. They're bringing it out tonight. And you see Leland Industries on the side of that car. We have to thank Byron Nelson from Leland Industries. They built a wonderful Canadian company featuring Canadian fasteners. They sponsor a race team, they sponsor this race, and they sponsor the TV broadcast. They do a lot for Canadian racing, and we thank them very much for that. But we have a big event here today, and with more, let's head to down trackside, starting off with Clinton Jeffrey. Clinton? Thanks, guys. It's been four weeks since the series' last race, and there's been a lot of testing going on here at Sunset Speedway. Everyone's very excited to be here. With two of the next races being 300 lappers on tracks very similar to this one, you can bet the crew chiefs are ready, the crews are ready, and the drivers are eager to get strapped in. Todd? That's right, Clinton, and one of those drivers buckling in, our E3 spark plug pole setter, that would be Caden Lapsovich, his first career NASCAR Pinty Series pole. The 16-year-old is having himself a terrific weekend. He won the late model race last night and blistered a new track record earlier today, 14.639 seconds. Some tough competition in today's race. Alongside on the front row is the number 32 of Alex LaBay. Finished seventh in this race last year and looking for a better result tonight. Let's get this party started. We'll go back up the track for the command to fire engines. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Minnesota Sunset Speedway. Drivers, start your engines. And the engines come to life as we prepare for 300 hard-fought laps here in the Leland Industries 300 presented by Dickies. There is Dwayne Baker, a great qualifying effort. He was fast in practice, too. And Dave, we've just seen three drivers with a ton of success at Sunset Speedway. Dwayne Baker in the 48, Mark Dilley in the 0-2, of course, Caden Lapsovich, and we're going to be on board today with Jason White in the Powder Ventures number 21 as well. And we'll take a look at tonight's Leland starting lineup as the cars roll off. Caden Lapsovich, as we mentioned, on pole. Alex LeBay in the 32 starting alongside. Problem for the third place starter, Dwayne Baker. That car needing a push to get fired, so not the way he wanted to start his day. Anthony Simone and Adam Martin, the rookie, making his first start. They make up row number three. In row four, it's Gary Clute in the 59, DJ Kennington in the 17. Taking a look back to row number five, there is Mark Dilley in the 0-2. Alex Tagliani, last year's winner, will have some work to do today. Starting in the sixth row, Kevin Lacroix in the 74 and Jason Hathaway in the three. Row number seven, Larry Jackson in the number one today and Matthew Scannell drives the 56. A lot of talent deep in the field. Andrew Ranger in the 27 alongside Trevor Siebert in the 69. And row number nine has Derek Lynch back behind the wheel at the number 75 and Josh Collins from Newfoundland will start to the outside. And rounding out the field, Jason White did not get a chance to qualify. That team was doing work on the transmission, he'll start tail. But he says he has a comfortable car to work with and is looking 
looking forward to today's race as we take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 300 laps, 100 miles on the third mile bank Doval, 29 degrees and clear skies. They're going to stop for fuel and two tires during this race, Dave. Before we go green, though, let's check in with Todd with tonight's Leland lead up to the green. A couple of things before we go green, fellas. The number 69 car back with us, Trevor Siebert running his first oval race in three years, said there's no pressure tonight. He's out to shake off the rust and have some fun and likes that approach. We'll see if it results in a decent finish. The three car of Jason Hathaway starting back in 12th, kind of surprised he and the team felt the car was great, tested really well. He's not worried about the starting position. What he is concerned about early on, it's a fast track, does not want to go a lap down and lose track position. Stay smart, long race, let's keep a left rear on this thing. And let's be here at the end, have a chance to win this thing. Let's go get them. That's Dave White talking to Andrew Ranger. It's their first time together. Dave White, the crew chief for the 27 team. As we head to the green flag, we're underway in the Leland 300 at Sunset Speedway. John Broussard, the member of parliament for Barry and Innisfil, waves the green flag over this one. Up on the outside, Alex LeBay trying to find some grip in that high groove. Caden Lapsovich, though, on the inside, and it will be LeBay who will lead lap number one. And the outside groove here at Sunset Speedway is beautiful. They've got a lot of room to race, Dave, and early on with cold tires, the outside might even be an advantage. Now, you see the big black marks up in the second groove. That was a drifting demonstration before we went green here for the Leland 300, so the drivers probably want to stay away from that just until all that rubber gets dusted off. Looks like the top four have settled in single file. Top five back to Gary Clute, but LP Dumoulin still hung up on the outside, trying to clear the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Oh, contact in one. And we'll probably see a lot of that today as Dilley gets into the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin riding along board the 0-2. See, and I think Dumoulin got into the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. That's the beauty of racing. <laughs> we can agree to disagree watching the same thing. Look at this side-by-side -side battle, though. A couple of rookies You've got Adam Martin up on the outside of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And Jason Hathaway in there as well. That's a battle for eight spot. And he's a pure rookie. His first time ever as Kevin Lacroix smokes the left front brakes. He's the only driver who hasn't got down to the inside yet, being extra cautious out there after starting in row number three. And Hathaway, a favorite in this race coming into this, struggled in qualifying. You see DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge. He's holding down the 11th spot. Those two drivers deeper in the field after qualifying, but they are up near the top of the speed charts. In practice, as Hathaway gets very crooked off board. He got a big piece of the rumble strip at the bottom of the racetrack, and that really upsets the race car. This is a great view as we look backwards off DJ Kennington. Watch Tagliani down into the corner, gets close to the rumble strips, but if you get up on them, it spits the car right up the racetrack. Give you an idea of how tight racing is here. You saw the tire mark on the nose of the EpiPen, number 18 of Alex Tagliani already. Only a handful of laps in. And you know, it's so hard to see. You talk about blind spots in race cars. Everything to your rear corners is a blind spot. You rely on your spotter, and you rely on that feel from your front and rear quarter panels, Dave. Nice dice here for fourth spot between Gary Clute and the Pioneer Pools, number 59, and the Innovative Plumbing, number 95 of Anthony Simone as they go side by side. You'll remember last year, Simone's race didn't really last long as he tangled with T.J. Kennington, ended up hard in the wall. They've got a good setup under the race car for Simone this time as we look back from the Pioneer Pools, number 59, Gary Clute. And look at that, Simone looking to the inside of Clute. There's some home track knowledge at work as Mark Dilley pinches it off off of four, and that's exactly how you can set up a pass here at Sunset Speedway. You get the run on the inside off the corner rather than diving it hard into the turns here at Sunset. And we're on board with LP Dumoulin running in the seventh position. Wow, Dilly, you can see how hard it is to get on the throttle on the inside of the racetrack. And that's why we see so much side-by-side -side action here at Sunset. So Simone up on the outside, he's hanging on there, and it seems as though that outside, just going to say, that outside groove seems to be working as Simone dirt tracks it around one and two, now into three and four, side by side with LP Dumoulin now. He's putting on a drifting demonstration, just like we saw about 20 minutes ago, Dave. That, if you hang the right rear out like that,
that and burn it up, you are not going to last 300 laps. He'll need to do, make some adjustments on that race car. And that's a battle for six spot, but there is a long way to go. And if history tells us anything, we had a long green flag run last year, so they may not have the opportunity to get that early pit stop to work on that race car and get the setup the way they need it. Well, and what we learned last year as well, it's not the car that's fast in the first 15 laps. It's a long race, and it is a hot, hot day. It's the car that can maintain its speed the best, and we haven't seen that yet, Dave. And we should say all of this action a little deeper in the field. Everybody is chasing the number 76 of Caden Lapsevich, who has led nearly since the drop of the initial green, sat on pole, very comfortable out in front of this field with 22 laps already in the books. And even the spotters reminding their drivers, be smooth off the corner. You've got to be so ginger on the throttle to save those rear tires for later in the run. And you have to look at the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix and how well he's doing here today. Remember, he doesn't have a lot of oval experience behind the wheel of these race cars. Listen to Jason Hathaway. So easy on the throttle trying to get the power down, but you can hear when he tried to drive under the car in front of him, he lit up those rear tires. There he is, your race leader, the youngster, Caden Lapsovich, comfortably out in front as Lacroix continues the battle with the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Sparks out of the Leland Industry, 0-2 Ford Fusion of Dilley. And I would have thought we'd see a right front tire down, Dave, but the tire looks to be inflated. We go on board. You can see Mark Dilley absolutely wrestling this race car. And now he'll pull up into the outside groove because he couldn't get down to pit lane. He knows there's something wrong, waiting for a gap as he tries to head that car down pit lane. Now the caution will fly. And Mark Dilley will take that car to the inside of the speedway and see what is up. But something broke and it broke in a hurry. We go on board. Let's, let's hear if we can hear something. Right there, you hear something go wrong in the suspension, and that car skates up the racetrack. Mark Dilley pulls the 0-2 Leland Industries machine in here. Crew lifting the hood as they go to work, jacking up the right side. They had problems with the fuel pickup on the car all afternoon. They changed the fuel pump. They had the fuel cell apart, and it appears to be still issues as they've got the hood up here on pit road. A few teams talked about this strategy. If there's an early caution, an early pit stop, and that's what we're seeing. The 18 in, the 3 in, both get a little handling adjustment and a lengthy stop for the 27. Also, a handling adjustment and some fuel. So the drivers that started deeper in the field in to make adjustments as everybody continues to try and catch the man of the moment, the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. He won in a late model last night. Can he do the same here today? Industries 300 presented by Dickies from Sunset Speedway is brought to you by Volpar, authentic performance. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honeydew, by Clean Flow, a honey of a lube. Preparing for the first restart of the day, and it is still Caden Lapsovich out in front hill of Alex LeBay once again to his outside. Green flag waves were back underway. A number of teams took the opportunity to come onto pit road, take on fuel, make some adjustments, but out front it remains Caden Lapsovich and Alex LeBay immediately pulling away from third place. And now LeBay able to duck down in behind the 76 up Caden Lapsovich. You see across the top of your screen the 0 2 of Mark Dilly. Five laps down, broken right front suspension. Heartbreak for that team after a 17th place finish here last year. Mark Dilly, the general manager here at Sunset Speedway, was hoping for better things. The crew did a great job to make that repair in just five laps, but that's a lot to overcome in one of these races, Dave. And speaking of Mark Dilley being the general manager here, Sunset Speedway, one of four NASCAR home tracks here in Canada, and what a wonderful facility this place is. Oh, Brian Toddish and the, and the Rena Mottos, they've done a great job with this facility. Fun to come here. something you'll hear a lot over the course of the day today. Still there, somebody on the outside. This is very much a two-groove racetrack as 
Kevin Lacroix in the 74 battles alongside the 95 of Anthony Simone. What a great side-by-side -side battle. Let me go back. I'd be remiss if I don't mention Sandra Tadish as well as Brian. <laughs> a lot of work done at this racetrack by Sandra as well. Good look at Josh Collins making his first start of 2016. Makes a little contact with a 47 of LP Dumoulin. There's Tagliani and DJ Kennington, the 18 and the 17. Look how smooth Tagliani rolls into the corner, closes in on Collins. Wasn't able to make a move just yet, but that car looks great early on. That's right on board, Jason White. And now we'll look back from Jason Hathaway in the Chaco number three. I was just going to say Jason White is just going to work. You hear him not really wrestling that car too much. Currently sitting in 12th spot, so making great gains from where he didn't qualify where he started this race. And you look ahead, Anthony Simone, way out of shape. Oh, and he gets the inside wall. Significant contact. Big time damage to the nose of the Innovative Plumbing Supply number 95. He carries on. No caution yet. The rear end on that race car is out of whack. Yeah, you can hear the on the radio, we're done. There is big damage, both front and back. You see the white wall tires on the left side. Tough break for Anthony Simone. You can see the tire marks on the inside wall. Have another look. All by himself, way out of shape out of turn four, just could not get the car corrected, and it was the inside wall. Yeah, so the damage to the nose was already there, but it's the left side damage that is going to end his day early. 76 car taking advantage of this second caution period for fuel. Just a quick drop and Caden Lapsovich on the way. Kevin Lacroix in here for a splash of gas here on the number 74 machine. Just ahead of him, Alex LeBay. Also with a splash of gas, they get that roll and back out to the speedway. There's Hathaway back down pit lane. LP Dumoulin, Gary Clute also getting service. Adam Martin making his first ever pit stop in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He too down and away and will rejoin the tail of the field. Well, we have shaken up the race order here. Look at the front row. Tagliani going to restart on the outside of row one. And Newfoundland's Josh Collins going to start for the pole. And you saw the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat pull down pit lane as he leaves the field in the hands of Josh Collins. Green flag is back up, and Collins will lead him into turn number one. Down into turn one, and Collins having trouble with that car sticking to the bottom. They both go up the racetrack, still door to door into turn three. Collins, the first man from Newfoundland to ever make a start in the NASCAR Pinty Series, passed by Alex Tagliani in the EpiPen Chevy up on the outside. That is Tagliani's happy place, that second groove here at Sunset Speedway. And watching Josh Collins, you can see why. Collins' car just would not drive around the inside. When you run the high groove, it's a smoother arc. I'm not going to say it's easier to get around, but the car likes it better. Keep an eye on the track surface itself. From the start of this race to the finish of this race, you see that black groove getting much, much wider as these cars lay down tremendous amounts of rubber over the course of 300 laps. That's exactly what's happening, and that's going to affect the handling of these race cars as that does happen. Clinton Jeffrey is pit side with the disappointed Anthony Simone. Where's Anthony Simone? Anthony, what's the story? What happened to your 95 machine tonight? Uh, we just had a really loose car coming off the four there. Uh, got a little bit loose, somebody got into the back of us a bit, and we got into the inside wall. Rough day. Tough break for Anthony Simone. This is the second year in a row he had issues here at Sunset. Good look at Trevor Siebert in the area 27.com, number 69. Battle for eight spot with Alex LeBay, and Siebert gets crooked into the inside car, and Jason White up to the outside wall. Wow, that just took out British Columbia. Siebert from Williams Lake, BC, and Jason White from Sun Peaks, British Columbia, and both of them sustained hard damage. And big damage to the Ray Bestis Brakes Chevy, number three of Jason Hathaway. That front end barely hanging on. Have another look. It's LeBay on the inside, Siebert up high. Wow, hard contact to the right front of LeBay, hard contact for White into the wall. Trevor Siebert actually might have got the least amount of damage. Matthew Scannell in the Omvic 56 got slowed down for that wreck, and Jason Hathaway just could not do the same. And there you see the frustration from Jason White as he was looking forward to a great finish here today, and the work starts on the three of Hathaway. 
Yeah, guys, the three stopped briefly on pit road, but then they saw how severe the damage was. The body work is not serious. It's that left front and the suspension underneath. They're going to take the body work away, get that left front tire off, and see exactly how serious it is. But it is significant for sure. And Hathaway, one of the favorites in this year's championship, will now have to look forward to the next race, the CRS Express 300 at Autodrome Chaudière, a place that he's done well at. And these oval races is where Jason Hathaway really wants to excel. But right now, it's Alex Tagliani in the lead. Welcome back to a beautiful evening at Sunset Speedway in the Leland Industries 300 on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross, Clinton Jeffrey, and Todd Lewis patrolling the pits as we restart on lap 75. Alex Tagliani, your race leader. And Tag got a great jump on that restart. Josh Collins up on the outside trying to hang on to second, but he's got a couple of chargers and DJ Kennington in the 76 of Caden Lapsovich hot on his heels. Couple of rookies chasing the veteran in Josh Collins and Caden Lapsovich. They're the two rookies. Alex Tagliani is the veteran. Look at Tagliani set sail though. He's opened up a two car length gap already. He just loves this racetrack and he's darn good on it. Trevor Siebert sort of initiated that last caution. They lost two laps in the pits, but he is back on the racetrack. Yeah, that car is pretty beat up. It doesn't look the best, but at least it's moving. He's able to get some points. Good luck at Dwayne Baker in the Mario Designs number 40 and DJ Kennington, the Castrol Edge Dodge. How about the number one of Larry Jackson? He's running in the seventh spot right now. This is his first race with Canada's best racing team. Remember, Robin Buck had a podium finish at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. So general manager Joey McComb enlisted the services of Larry Jackson. And Jackson, a veteran late model race car driver in this area, has tons of laps on places like Sunset Speedway, so he's very, very comfortable on an oval track, and he looks pretty comfortable in the in that car. And as a former J.R. Fitzpatrick car that he's driving, I think it's fair to say this is the best equipment he's ever had to drive in this series. I would say so, too. But hats off, you know what, to Larry Jackson's teammate for the day, the 25 of Josh Collins. I don't think anybody expected him to be the front of this race for as long as he's been there. You know, Josh Collins is a really hard charger. He buries the car into the corners. That's not exactly the best way to get around Sunset Speedway, but he's doing a great job right now. Battle for the lead. And there is what a veteran does. You heard Warren Jones on the scanner. Alex Tagliani open up the inside. Caden Lapsovich a little bit quicker. He gets through. No fuss, no muss, and they carry on. Look at still with a gap on third place, Josh Collins. We've seen it a few times, and we haven't talked about it today, but I love the onboard where we can look at Caden Lapsovich's eyes. He's a teenager, but he's got the focus of a veteran. He's a veteran of the super stock ranks here at Sunset Speedway and then now running a late model as we mentioned here at this very track. So he's at home on the oval at Sunset Speedway. Eighth place for LP Dumoulin on board and he's fighting an ill handling race car, Dave. Yeah, they were pretty pumped coming into this one. Thought they had a good car, but the handling has, seems to have gone off. So they'll look to make some changes at their next opportunity. But Keaton Lapsovich, a driver not fighting that race car at all as he opens up a gap now on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. And we heard some great news this weekend. Keaton Lapsovich is going to be at Autodrome Chaudière next race. And he's going to have a Schwiegen Speedway on board that race car as a sponsor. That is great news. And hopefully more Canadian companies will come on board that 76 and keep him going because... He's had two really great finishes to start the 2016 season. Well, and that's that's what our Weekend Speedway is doing. They want to promote Casey Kane is going to be at the track July 25th and 26th at our Weekend right near Brantford, Ontario. What better way to promote it than here on TSN with a front-running driver? And Lapsovich into lap traffic as he goes around the number 75 absolute transport dodge of Derek Lynch. But Caden Lapsovich has this one well in hand. We're approaching lap 100 at Sunset Speedway, and he leads the field. You're watching NASCAR on TSN from Sunset Speedway. This is the Leland 
300 presented by Dickies. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. And you can see the field nicely spread out around this third of a mile oval now. Well, and it's just like we said, Dave. Give them a little bit of time, and you're going to see which cars are handling well and which cars are not. And we are running out of lead lap cars. Now, if you looked at the practice sheets from earlier on this afternoon, it was seven-tenths of a second covering the entire field. So you thought, okay, we've got them all close. But you're right. Some set up for short runs. Some set up for long runs. And now it really is separating the good cars from the cars that struggled with their setup a little bit. And look at Caden Lapsovich leading the race right behind Andrew Ranger, multi-time series champion. He just put Adam Martin a lap down. And Ranger's driving for all he's worth, trying to stay on the lead lap. And the driver that Mopar Dodge came into this event as your points leader. And he's struggling mightily here today. Gaden Lapsovich to the inside of Ranger, carefully weeding his way through this lap traffic. This is where a race can really jump up and bite, particularly a young driver. Riding on board the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger, and you see Lapsovich to the inside of the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin. That blue flag with the yellow stripe across it, telling the drivers the leader is coming up as the 47 goes his second lap down. Dumoulin, one of those drivers struggling here today. Yeah, two laps down for Dumoulin. That's got to be a surprise. And now a battle for position is Adam Martin looking to go around Andrew Ranger. That Johnsonville Ford that Martin's behind the wheel of. They plan to run four races this year. This will be their only oval track event, and then they're going to do three road courses, Dave. And you see that modified looking number 69. No front bearings, no bodywork on the nose of the Area27.com, number 69 of Trevor Siebert, but he is keeping pace. There's nothing wrong with that race car. Well, as we've looked at the scoring monitors the last few laps, he's as fast as anybody out there. Josh Collins having a great run, sitting in third spot, starting all the way back in 18th. Here's a look at your fourth place runner, the GD Coats used car superstore, number 48 of Dwayne Baker. And that's a gorgeous looking race car. It really is. Good folks at Mario Design did a wonderful job wrapping that car, and it's working very well. This is probably the best day that Dwayne Baker has had so far in his NASCAR Pinty Series career. And as many times as I see that car, I just can't see the yellow stripe making any sense. But he is a rookie in our series. Here's a driver who is not a rookie. Larry Jackson from Oakville, Ontario, driving the Pilate number one. And Larry Jackson with Pilate race shoes on his feet here today. He says they're really comfortable and it looks like he's making himself comfortable inside that Ford Fusion. But look at the leader now getting caught by the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Tagline has moved up about a groove, and we've got problems. Turn number four, that is Gary Clouton, the 59, who goes around. Caution, flag flies. So Gary Clouton able to keep the car running, but that was the leader that went by. He is now a lap down. And that's what hurts about a tight track, like a third of a mile over. But we'll have another look at what happened. Down into three, he's got L.P. Dumoulin right behind him. Oh, and Josh Collins from the inside groove makes contact with Clute. There's not much you can do in that case. This will be a great look. Looking back from Gary Clute's car, Collins on the lead lap. Clute going a lap down. It's time to go. Caden Lapsovich has run a beautiful race so far. Now it's up to the 76 team. Overshoots the pit just a little. The crew push him back, and now they're going to go to work to change those right side tires. Fresh Goodyear's for the race leader. And Caden having to pit at an awkward angle. He had to get around Alex LeBay to get into his pit stall. And a tight pit lane as service continues. There goes LeBay, and Alex Tagliani will win the race off pit lane. So Tagliani will take the lead thanks to his crew during pit stops here in the Leland Industries 300. We'll be back. Getting set for restart number four, the NASCAR Pinty Series, Leland Industries 300 from Sunset Speedway. Alex Taglietti, your leader, but look at that. He holds the field back. Baker started to jump ahead. We're back underway, and Caden Lapsovich gets the worst of it. Three wide into turn number one. That is not the way to do it, and Caden Lapsovich had to bite the brake pedal. And Lapsovich lost the lead on a congested pit road, and now he's losing time on the racetrack as Larry Jackson and the Pilate number one 
moves to the inside of Dwayne Baker. Unbelievable top five, including Josh Collins, Larry Jackson, Dwayne Baker. We're getting down to the uh, down to the water in this race. They're having some great runs. Absolutely, two cars from the CBRT stables inside the top five. Best showing by that race team so far in the NASCAR PT series. And Trevor Siebert without much of a front end on that number 69, right behind the early race leader, Caden Lapsovich. I remember when CBRT joined the NASCAR Pinty Series with Bud Moore at the helm, the owner of that group. He wanted to do it right. He says, we're not coming to just play around. We're coming to win, and that's exactly what they're doing here today. Well, you're absolutely right, but right now, Josh Collins under pressure from Sunset Speedway veteran Dwayne Baker as they battle for second spot, but out front, Tagliani is checking out. See Baker there right on the back bumper, the number 25, the Ford Fusion of Josh Collins, a pair of rookies in the NASCAR Pinty Series, as we mentioned before, chasing each other nose to tail. We're single file right through the top five as you see the 59 of Gary Clute coming back on the racetrack. He had some right rear issues, currently three laps down. That's a tough break for the NASCAR next driver. Well, especially considering the way the opening round went at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park between he and his brother. They blew up three engines that weekend. They were hoping to really rebound strong here. And it was a real possibility that he could here because he sat on pole here last year at Sunset Speedway thinking, I could probably do good things here. And unfortunately, as Lady Luck goes, sometimes she's just not on your side. Larry Jackson under pressure from the 76 of Caden Lapsovich trying to recover from that pit road mishap and then that nasty-looking restart. That's a battle for fourth spot. Collins around, coming off a of turn number two. Heartbreak for the rookie. As the number 25 Ford Fusion headed in the wrong direction, the caution flag flies, so he'll be able to take his time a little bit to get back and going. Collins trying to outdrive Dwayne Baker, just got a little bit ahead of himself, loops it around. Tagliani, your race leader. The view from high above Sunset Speedway. What a spectacular angle to see this racetrack as we get set for the restart. Here in the Leland Industries, 307 cars remain on the lead lap. Alex Tagliani and Dwayne Baker. Trial number two for a restart. Green flag is up. We're back underway. Another great launch by Alex Tagliani. Larry Jackson trying to squirt through as well. Baker hanging on the outside. He'll tuck down, get in line behind the 18, or will he? It looks like Jackson had a nose in there and said, wait a second, I have other thoughts. You know, and the, the best thing for Jackson might have been getting his rear bumper up in front of the 76. Didn't quite do it, though, and Caden Lapsovich hunting on the outside. Have a look there, though. The number nine, the Johnsonville Ford of young Adam Martin. Can I say it? Where did he come from? You know, people said that after qualifying, a sixth-place effort. Time trialing these cars is not easy on brand-new Goodyear tires. Qualified sixth. Hey, Don Jacobson on top of the pit box of that Johnsonville number nine, that certainly doesn't hurt his effort. No, Don Jacobson has been around this series for a long time. He's won a number of races with Pete Shepard at the wheel, and now he's help, helping to mold another young driver. And that car prepared out of the mixed motorsports stable. There's a lot of experience that goes into preparing that race car. But then you got to drive it. And Adam's doing a whale of a job. And he's not rattled. He's sitting in fourth spot. He has a lot of veteran drivers around him, including Larry Jackson on the inside. Now he's got his teammate, Mark Dilley, right on his back bumper. Dilley, of course, a number of laps down, seven laps down in 15th spot. Or six, I should say, as he crosses the line. And it's all part of their master plan. Martin hopes to compete the entire 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series. So far, he's showing that he belongs. He definitely does. But look, getting racy is a 25 of Josh Collins, no doubt driving with his elbows out. A little uh, hot under the collar, I can imagine. Well, one thing Josh did really well, even when he spun out, he kept the car running, got out on the lead lap. There's seven cars right now on the lead lap, so he restarted here the top five. And there is your second place run on the number 48 of Dwayne Baker chasing the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Once again, the race leader. Remember last year, he won by over a lap. Doesn't look like he'll be able to do that again here as Baker is closing the gap. He is. He's driving that car into the corners hard. Tagliani's just kind of rolling the car into the turn and getting a nicer run off the corner. Quick on board on the Mopar Dodge, and there's Larry Jackson giving a point out the window, letting his teammate go by on the inside, and that is Larry Jackson in a nutshell. He's made a career of doing that. He's, nobody dis 
slouch, Larry Jackson. It's <laughs> true. But you know what? He's not a slouch on the racetrack. Caden Lapsovich to the inside of Dwayne Baker for second. So Baker going to try and hang on on the outside as the rookies lean on each other down the back straightaway. And that'll be enough for Caden Lapsovich to take over second spot. Such a thing of beauty, watching a couple of drivers with thousands of laps on this racetrack. They know exactly where they can run. They, they touched a little bit, but that's just short track racing. But did you see what that side-by-side -side battle did? It allowed the 18 of Alex Tagliani to really stretch his legs. Here's a couple of cars that are back from that battle at the very front, but doing a great job. They're still on the lead lap as laps continue to wind down here, David Sunset. Airport Fusion, they were battling for fourth spot. Adam Martin and the 25 of Josh Collins. There is Alex Tagliani now deep into lap traffic once again on the back bumper, the number 47, WeatherTech.ca. Dodge of LP Dumoulin. And Dumoulin really struggling. He's sitting in 12th spot. Not the day that they were hoping to have. Wow, and you see it there. That car just about snapped around on LP Dumoulin. It is no fun to drive a car like this, Dave. It really isn't. There it goes again off of four sideways. LP Dumoulin will be exhausted after this race. Some debris in turn number four will bring out the caution. You saw it quickly as the field went around. So... The field will line up once again behind that Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. Beautiful pace car for the NASCAR Pinty Series. And there's your debris. Never like seeing stuff wind up on the racetrack that started in the grandstands. It brings out a yellow here at sunset. Riding on board the 15th place car of Mark Dilley in the Leland Industries 300. DJ Kennington getting the free pass during this last caution. We now have eight cars on the lead lap as the field lines up, heads back to green. On board now with LP Dumoulin lined up just behind the lead lap cars, and we're green out of turn number four. Wow, Caden Lapsovich might have got away a little bit early there. And he was the first car to cross the stripe. Alex Tagliani coming back on the inside, but no doubt NASCAR will be taking a look at that. And once Tagliani goes back and takes the lead, it kind of negates that penalty anyhow. You've got to give it back if you take it wrongly in NASCAR's eyes. And Tagliani slides down into turn one with the lead, but Caden drops to the bottom. Back on the inside there, Crossway. Contact from Caden Lapsovich into the rear corner, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. It is go time. Sunset Speedway. And that was not insignificant contact there. Tagliani is still loose, and there goes Dwayne Baker. Josh Collins getting into the back of Dwayne Baker, and caution flies once again as Baker sits stop. We'll have another look at what happened. Driving down into three and four, Collins right on the bumper, lifts up the back end of Baker. Oh, and here's a problem. Baker locks it up. If he can't get that car refired, we know they had starter issues at the start of that race. And you see the field going by, and it looks like Dwayne Baker will, in fact, need a push to get the number 48 refired. So we continue under caution here at Sunset Speedway. Just 22 laps to go here in the Leland Industries 300, presented by Dickies at Sunset Speedway. Six cars remain on the lead lap. We should mention Josh Collins penalized during that last caution. One lap now, down now is Josh Collins to the race leaders and Dwayne Baker out of the race. They've rolled that car into the pits. They're not running for points. Once he lost laps sitting on the racetrack, there was no point really in going back out. Dave. Alex Tagliani in his first start of 2016 after racing in the Indianapolis 500 continues to lead here, but he has a challenger on his back door, the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Running in third right now is Larry Jackson in the CBRT number one, and there Here's the battle for fourth. Adam Martin in the nine, the 74, Kevin Lacroix, DJ Kennington in the 17. And there is a perfect example of keeping your nose down and getting to work. DJ Kennington getting laps back in the Castro Dodge and now inside the top five. Unbelievable here, Dave. Alex Tagliani leading the way. He's chased by three drivers that have never won a race in our series. 
Gary Jackson holding down third spot, but losing ground to the top two as Keaton Lapsovich continues to try and find the early race form he had here at Sunset Speedway, where he was able to open up a huge gap, trying hard to keep up to the 18 of Tagliani. There's still a lot of racing left to come here. Like we say, Caden Lapsovich with a lot of experience. Super stocks, limited late models here at this track. If anybody can find speed, that's the young man to do it. And how about Kevin Lacroix? Driver has kept his nose clean all day long in the bumper to bumper number 74. You'll remember the race number one at CTMP didn't go according to plan for that team. Unfortunately failed to finish, but he's having a great run here today. It's only the third time he's ever raced anything on an oval track he looks pretty darn good yeah once a racer always a racer and now battling for fifth spot with the 17 of dj kennington we talk about crew chief combinations he's got don thompson jr on his pit box undoubtedly giving him some coaching and a pretty fast race car on board with mark dilly as we watch that battle unfold in front and now Lacroix able to tuck up in front of the 17 of DJ Kennington. Kennington struggling a little bit in the late going. And Kennington got back on the lead lap with a lucky dog. And he's one at the end of these races that there's another one that'll find all the speed that there is in that race car. How about this for a stat? Kennington only one of two drivers who have started all 110 NASCAR Pinty Series events. His average finish on the oval, sixth. Incredible. Yeah, not bad at all, is it? We look at Larry Jackson all by himself on the racetrack in that CBRT number one. And here we've got another battle for position as Kevin Lacroix goes underneath Adam Martin battling for fourth. Martin in the Johnsonville number nine. A little crossways coming off in turn number four up in the outside groove. And the bumper to bumper total lubricants number 74 of Lacroix holding down that inside lane. They're side by side. As we've seen all day long, the driver on the outside can smoothly get on the throttle. The one on the inside sort of attacks the corner, drives it in hard, and then hopes he can get the forward bike coming off. Fewer than six laps remain here at Sunset Speedway. You have to get it done now if you can, and that's exactly what Kevin Lacroix is trying to do. A great battle by a couple of young drivers. Adam Martin, we got to say it again, his first ever appearance on the series. Alex Tagliani has opened up just a little bit more than a second lead on second place. Caden Lapsovich as these two continue to dice side by side for fourth and fifth. And I don't believe, well, in fact, look at the left side of the number nine, Adam Martin. These two cars have not made contact. They've been door to door for about five laps now. Yeah, they're racing like a pair of open wheel drivers. Lots of respect between the two of them as they continue to go side by side. This great two groove racetrack giving some great racing with three laps to go. And you can see both drivers having to work the steering wheel, work the throttle, work the brakes. There's some lap traffic in front of them. This could play a factor in how this battle turns out. Hathaway back on track, collecting points, but he'll talk to the inside and let this battle play out as Lacroix gets a little crossways, and that's all Adam Martin needed to scoot out in front in a fourth spot. Two laps to go, coming up to the white flag now for your race leader, Alex Tagliani. One to go for Tagliani with nearly a half straightaway lead. So smooth at this racetrack, so impressive for the second year in a row. It's not by a lap, but he'll win it again. Alex Tagliani cruises to the checkered in the Leland Industries 300 at Sunset Speedway. Caden Lapsovich finishes second, and how about Larry Jackson finishing third? This is a great run for team owner Colin Livingston and that number 18. And Alex Dagliani will calmly and coolly bring it down to victory lane. He'll celebrate for a second year in a row. Welcome back as we get set for victory lane ceremonies here at Sunset Speedway in the NASCAR Pinty Series, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, another clinic. He did it again. He didn't win by a lap, but at the end of the race, he had the best race car. For the second straight year, Alex Tagliani is climbing out of that number 18 car and is victorious here at Sunset Speedway. He accepts the checkered flag as crew chief Tyler Case passes it off to him. And Alex Tagliani, it made you work a little harder for it this year, didn't you? You weren't able to lap the field, but what a job you did on that final restart. Yeah, obviously, uh, that was really good racing with Caden. Um, it's a great track to race like that, you know, so, uh, I mean, it's a good show on restarts. The team did a fantastic job. I'm just really, really, really lucky to drive this car, and Tyler's doing an amazing job. The boys were 
you know, really, I was going to say bad A in the pit stops. But, uh, yeah, I'm so thankful for this program, the EpiPen, Ryobel, Complex, GC Perro, Cantorque. Everybody's, you know, supporting us, Just Dupin. Um, yeah, this team's first, first race for me. Uh, hopefully there's more to come, but uh, great job from the team. Great job. Two for two for Alex Tagliani at Sunset Speedway. While we're here with Caden Lapsovich, Caden, this is your home track. You know this place probably better than any of the guys you raced with today, except for a few. You grabbed the pole today. You were just on fire in the top three all day long. A little bit disappointing today, would you say? Um, yeah, you know, I think I just... I got out drove to be honest. Um, I used too much up too early trying to keep the distance, but um, you know, as much as it's disappointing, it's also a real confidence booster running with, you know, an Indy 500 pole sitter and guys that have done this for many years. Um, you know, it's very satisfying at the same time, but it's also disappointing. Um, you know, but I learned a ton and I'll be able to come back here next year and apply what I learned today and uh, use it and hopefully pick up that top position on the podium. A great day here for young Caden Lapsovich. He's got a promising career ahead of him. Look for great things from this young driver. Now, just a very mature young man. He shows it in the interviews. He shows it on the racetrack. Have a look at the top 10. Adam Martin, fourth place. Kevin Lacroix, top five. What a great job. And you know what? I really want to hear what Larry Jackson has to say. His best career finish winds up on the podium, and Todd Lewis is down with Larry right now. Larry Jackson, what a drive you had in that car today, and you took it off at the end just to, just to go for it. Unbelievable. Got to thank uh, CBRT, uh, Bud Moore, and Joey McComb, my family, my crew, for putting together a great car. You know, we have two days in this car, 15 laps of testing, and I'm not a fan of this track, but I am today. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, amazing. Great run for Larry Jackson in that number one car. You know what, Rainer Shine, Larry Jackson always has that smile on his face. Have a look at the points, though. We have a tie for top spot. Caden Lapsovich and Andrew Ranger, polar opposites in the experience chart. DJ Kennington made back a lap today, third in the points. That's what experience will do for you. Larry Jackson up inside the top four now as the trophy presentation in victory lane. There is track owner Brian Tottish handing over the hardware. The Leland 300 has been brought to you by... Spark plugs, born to burn. By Pinties, making great food fun. By Bennett Golf Cars and Utility Vehicles. Visit BennettGolfCars.ca. And by Alpine Stars. Well, another great showing here for Alex Tagliani. Welcome back to the series. First race of the year and his first win of the year. And the next race will be the CRS Express 300 at Autodrome Show the Air from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.